So in this video, what we're going to be doing is addressing a problem that I have. If we take a look at my desktop, this is the problem. The problem is Windows. I unfortunately need to use Windows to run a piece of software that you're seeing on the screen now called ArcGIS Pro. Yes, I know there are free and open source alternatives, but for the certification that I'm working on, I need to know how to use this software and I need to use it basically every single day. I've tried other solutions such as installing this in VirtualBox and running it that way, but it, there's just so many little things you run into that don't make it the absolute best solution. Now, this little mini PC right here is what I've been using as my media server. Now, luckily, as of recent, I've upgraded to a dedicated NAS that I'm gonna be covering on this channel in the future. So it leaves me with this little mini PC that I can basically do whatever I want with. And yes, this has been my uh, storage solution for my media. Now, I just mentioned that using a virtualization software such as VirtualBox, Boxes, Vert Manager, things like that aren't really the best solution. And that's because those are type two hypervisors. The virtualization software actually runs on the host OS and depends on the host operating system, access all the hardware from your CPU, memory, network card, all that stuff. What we're gonna be using in this video is a type one hypervisor. And this is basically gonna cut out the middleman. Instead of having to install software on top of an already existing operating system, our hypervisor or virtualization software is going to be our operating system. Now with this, I should be able to get rid of Windows off of my computer and solely rely on the virtual machine that I'm gonna be installing on Proxmox, the software that we're actually gonna be using to do this. But before we do all that, I need to thank the sponsor of today's video, Linode. The Node is the largest independent cloud service provider out there, and I've been using them for quite some time to host the front end of techhut.tv. One of my favorite things about Linode is their easy one-click installs to fire up services such as WordPress, media servers, game servers, and a lot more. If you need to run a Linux server for absolutely any reason, Linode is one of the best options for you. There's all kinds of distributions to pick from, the uptime is fantastic, and today you could get a $100 60-day credit to go ahead and try out the note today just make sure you go ahead and use the link down in the description below now this right here is the proxmox website now actually using a uh, type 1 hypervisors this is going to allow us to have much better performance because the vms are actually going to be installed on bare metal basically and overall just managing various virtual machines is going to be a lot easier and most importantly to me a lot easier to remote into and connect to from outside of my home network and the cool thing about this is anybody can set up their own type one hypervisor. I'm doing this on this little mini PC that I showed you, but if you have an old laptop laying around, you could do it on that. If you have an old PC, as long as you have enough uh, system resources, maybe at least dual cores, at least four gigabytes of RAM, you are going to be able to do this with no problem. You'll also need a, uh, a LAN connection because this does not like Wi-Fi. <laughs> oh yeah, and additionally, you're gonna need a USB drive. So let's go ahead and plug this in and actually download and install this. So on the Proxmox website from the homepage, all we're gonna want to do is head over to downloads and right here, we're gonna have the latest version. Let's go ahead and click on download and wait for that. And while it does download, I'm gonna go ahead and set up this mini PC. We are gonna need to be able to see it on a monitor for a little bit. But after the initial setup process, you'll be able to remote into it from any computer in your home network, basically. And to get this set up, what we're gonna to want to do is burn this to our USB. Now to actually do this, we're gonna be using a tool called Etcher. If you're in Linux right now, you can just use like the GNOME disk tool or something like that. Let's go ahead and open this up. And now let's go ahead and flash from file, pick our downloaded ISO, which is right here. Select target, we will select our USB select and flash. So this might take a sec, depending on your hardware. This is a USB 3.0, so hopefully it won't take too long. All right, it's about done, and look, Windows is already trying to ruin things, so let's get, nope, let's not do that. I'm just gonna unplug it, I don't trust it. All right, so I unplugged the USB drive. Now what we're gonna do, plug it into whatever machine you plan on installing Proxmox onto, and go into your boot menu, luckily, I'm a couple steps ahead of the game. It's already plugged in. I'm in my boot menu here. This is recorded with a uh, capture card. So we're gonna go ahead and boot to that USB that we just created to launch the Proxmox installer. Here you can see, let's go ahead and install Proxmox. And it may take a little bit to boot up depending on the speed of that USB in which you installed it on. All right, here we have the end user license agreement. I do recommend you go ahead and do a quick skim through that. It's not that long, might as well read it. 
I'm not sure if I already mentioned, but this is free and open source software, so that is awesome. So now here you're gonna select the target hard disk. If you only have one disk in your system, easy enough, click next. I actually have two disks, and I know that the smaller one here is the SSD on my system, and I'm gonna put more and more important virtual machines on that SSD, so I'm gonna go ahead and also install Proxmox on that SSD. So from here, let's go ahead and go next. And now we have our country time zone stuff. So I am in the United States. And from here, I'm gonna go ahead and go uh, America, Los Angeles. Like I've said before, thankfully, I am nowhere near Los Angeles. So let's go like that. US English is fine. And then next. Now from here, let's go ahead and create a super strong, complicated and secure password for your instance of Proxmox. Might as well go ahead and, and put an email too. And then let's go ahead and go next. And now from here with your internet plugged in, it should automatically detect your card, uh, assign this machine or give you what your IP address is going to be. Here under hosting, you are gonna have to input something else other than dot invalid. If I hit this, you can see that that host name is not found. Uh, if you're not needing any sort of ACME certificate or anything like that, and you just plan on using this yourself, you're not an IT professional, this doesn't matter too much. I do recommend you end with .local and do not use an actual domain name for this. So for example, I'll do like proxmox.hopkey.local, something like that. On my local network, I just kind of preface a lot of things with Hopkey. It's part of my last name. It's just what I do. Uh, so let's go next from there. And if there were no issues you saw this time, it allowed us to proceed. You can run through, make sure everything looks good to you. Keep a note of this IP address that you're going to be connecting to. And then from there, we could go ahead and hit install. So now it's installing over here. We can see it is enterprise ready, online backup solution, clustering. There's a really a lot you can do with it. We're barely going to scrape the surface of some of the things that you could actually do with this software. And you saw there that there was only a one to three on average performance loss to using something like this versus running VirtualBox or some sort of uh, other virtualization type two hypervisor on your actual host operating system. And it's cool because this installation is going pretty quick because my uh, I'm recording this on a MacBook, at least the screen capture, and it's about to die. So go, go, go. And there we go. Now, if I go ahead and hit enter, we are going to be booting into Proxmox. Now it's from this point that we're actually not going to need to do that much from this machine here. We can log in, but you can see on the top, it tells us if we want to go ahead and set it up, we have our IP address. For me, it's ending in dot 37 and it's port 8006. So let's go ahead and jump back onto our primary computer and sign in. All right, we're back. I went ahead and navigated to that local IP address with the proper port. You'll get this warning, it's fine, it's your server, it's safe. Let's go ahead and continue. And now here we have the Proxmox login. So I'm just gonna type in root and then input the password that I inputted earlier. And then for the rest of these settings, it all looks good to me. So let's go ahead, uh, save the username, log in. And right here, it will say you do not have a valid subscription. Like I said, this is free and open source. This is a subscription for their support. Uh, I don't need that. If you're doing this for as like a business or for businesses, it might be something worth looking into. But here we are, we have our Proxmox dashboard. So I'm gonna make everything a little bit bigger so you can see it. If I go under here, you can see I have local and local LVM storage. Now this is kind of an issue here. Local LVM we can't really use for uh, creating virtual machines on. You can see that is using 375 gigabytes of our space and our local storage that we, or our local drive here that we actually can use is only a hundred. And this is about a 500 gigabyte uh, SSD. So I want to unlock the full potential of my storage. And to actually do this, what I'm gonna do is actually remove this local LVM. Just as note in full credit, I got uh, this information from Network Chuck. I'll go ahead and link to his Proxmox, Proxmox video down below if you're interested. So let's head over to Data Center and under here, we're gonna go over to Storage. Now let's go ahead and select that local LVM and simply remove it. And now what we're gonna to wanna to do is go over to Proxmox. Let's go over to the shell. And now this is our actual shell for Proxmox. It's pretty cool. This is where you could go ahead and actually do some sys admin work here. Now what I'm gonna do is do a LV remove dash dev PVE and data. Data. Hit enter. Yes, I do want to remove that. 
And now let's do a resize. So let's do LV resize dash L. And then we're going to do a uh, plus a hundred percent plus 100 percent free. And then we're going to link that to dev P V E and root hit enter. And last but not least, we're going to resize our local little partition there. So to do that, we're just going to type in. Okay. I, I keep typing this command wrong here. It's just a uh, FS. So resize to FS dev mapper PVE root hit enter and it is done. So if we go and check up on that real quick, if all was done properly, you can see now we have the entire size of that hard drive, just including the uh, little bit it actually took to install Proxmox. So now what we're going to do is actually allow this local partition to store our uh, disk images. So we're going to go over to data center under storage. We're going to select right here edit it and under content, we are going to allow disk images. So go ahead and give that a click, hit okay. So now before we go ahead and actually spin up our very first virtual machine, what we're gonna need to do is head over to local here and let's go ahead and upload an ISO image. And then that way, when you go ahead and create your virtual machine, you'll have the ISO images on there ready to go. So I'm gonna go upload, select a file and in my documents folder, I have Windows 10. So that's going to be the first one I upload. So let's hit upload. And this is on my local network. So it's going to be moderately quick. All right, it's finishing up there. And it looks like everything was okay. So let's close this out. Now if I refresh that we will have our Windows 10 ISO. And while I'm in here, I might as well add the other one I plan on installing and that would be Endeavor OS. And we're done. So let's go ahead and create our very first virtual machine. And to do that, I'm just going to go up here, create VM. Uh, Proxmox is good. This is going to be our Windows 10 virtual machine. Actually, I'm just going to go Windows like this because I might upgrade. We'll see. So from there, let's go next operating system storage. Local is perfect. Let's go ahead and add the Windows 10 ISO type is going to be Microsoft Windows. And this is going to be Windows 10 to start. And let's go next. Now for the system graphics card, we'll go default machine, default, uh, default controller, default BIOS, everything's looking good. And over here, we do have the option to add TPM. So I'm going to do that. TPM storage will be local version is two, just in case if I do want to do that upgrade. So next we have disks. Now the disk size in gigabytes, I'm going to give this 128 because I am going to be using this quite a bit and local is the perfect spot. So let's go next CPU. Let's up the cores a bit to four cores and I can adjust this later. I'm not exactly sure this is a mobile Ryzen processor. So four cores should be fine. Uh, let's go next memory. I want to give it a good amount of memory. So this is how much RAM I'm going to give it. That's a lot of RAM, but I need it for the applications that I'm going to be using. So let's go next network. All this looks good. Boom. And right here, let's start after created and finish. And there we go. It's going to be spinning up our new virtual machine running windows. So here I could go ahead and click on it and it will give us a lot more information. We see our CPU usage, all the health information and monitoring tools we will ever need. Now, if I drop down over here to console, this is going to be our GUI. And there we go. It's taken a little bit, but we can see the setup screen there. And while it does this, actually here it is. Okay, let's go ahead and set up Windows real fast. And I do have a product key, but I'm not going to enter it right now. It's an education key that I got for free. So just to save the hassle, I'm going to select education, go next, accept all of these terms of service, custom. Here we go. Here's our 128. Let's go next. And there we go. Now, while it does that with it's running just fine. So we could actually go ahead and go do other things while this is doing what it needs to do. Let's go ahead and create another VM, shall we? Let's uh, Proxmox. This is going to be Endeavor OS. Uh, let's go next. ISO image Endeavor. Here is our Endeavor OS install. So let's get that going. Now I've been growing really fond of the uh, Cinnamon desktop environment as of recent. So I'm going to pick that for this Endeavor install and then go up to summary here. We can see what's going on. We are using a lot of our system memory because I have that Windows machine up and running. Uh, you can run these virtual machines all the time, but that Windows machine, I'm actually going to turn off and on as I'm actually needing to use it. So I'm not going to be constantly hogging 12 gigabytes of RAM on this uh, 
on the system here. Who is it going to let me do native? Oh, it is going to let me do native. Keep changes. Now this has more cores and all that, so it's going to perform a little bit better. It is a little bit touchy. There are different ways you could view these virtual machines, but it this is 100% virtual running through my web browser at the moment, and it's working awesome. Now, like I said, the main reason I wanted to do this was for this application right here. So let's give this a quick download. Pretty good download speed we're getting. All right, there we go. Now, based on my CPU, I'm probably gonna end up giving it a couple more cores, but I do have access to my data. I have access to my project. Uh, everything's still loading up. If you know anything about ArcGIS Pro, this is uh, actually running fairly well for the circumstances. And what I'm gonna try a little bit later is installing Fedora as my main distribution and connecting to this through the connections application that's built into Noma 41 on Fedora. So I'm super excited to try that out. I hope you did enjoy this video. If you have an extra piece of hardware like this laying around, this is a super fun thing to go ahead and try out and play around with. And like I said earlier, if you're looking for something to actually host, like websites, game servers, things like that, check out the sponsor of today's video, Linode. Use the link in the description to get a $100 60-day credit. And big thank you to all my Patreon supporters and YouTube members. You guys are truly awesome. Uh, with all that said, if you're interested in any other virtualization type videos, I do plan on continuing doing some work with this. But if you're interested in learning a lot more about this right now, you can check out the series by Learning Linux TV. He has a ton of different stuff on this, and he's more of a professional as I am a hobbyist. Uh, with all that said, I do hope you have an absolutely beautiful day, and goodbye.